Welcome back to the Trade Hacker Mindset. In this episode, I'm going to let you listen in on a coaching call that I did with one of our members. Andrew was ready to quit trading. He was ready to throw in the towel. And so you'll get to hear us kind of walking through some very specific action items that he's going to be taking to help put his trading on track. I hope you enjoy. Cue up the intro and then we'll come back and jump right into the call. Trading the markets can be difficult to master and seemingly just out of reach. Professional traders have a secret. Trading requires total mental and emotional control. It requires the trade hacker mindset. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. Um, I'm really happy that, that you set this up. <laughs> it's nice to talk to you. I've watched a lot of your videos and then learned a lot from you. So it's, uh, I'm just, it's cool to, to talk to you. <laughs> well, good. Well, I, I, I hope I can help. L yeah. Let's jump in. Cause I don't, I don't want to waste any time. I want to, okay. I've got several things I want to ask you and then hopefully we can get a, an action plan together for you to get you going in the right direction. Okay. That'd be awesome. I, I just really appreciate it. I, I trust your guidance and you just, yeah, so let's let's jump in. So, so yeah, I'm now, basically I'm basically doing full time right now trading. Got it. Okay, cool. Of all the different strategies that you've learned and and kind of traded, if you had to list your top three, what do you think those would be? What do you kind of gravitate to? What do you like? What kind of strategy do you like trading the most? Is it more the neutral stuff? Is it the directional? I think I feel most comfortable with the neutral stuff. Okay. I would like to trade directional. It's something that like kind of is intriguing to me, um, but I just haven't, I don't know. It's like, I just, I get like psyched out or something. I, I try all these different things and it's like, I look at all these different charts and, you know, uh, and it's like, I want to do the directional stuff, but I don't know. It's, I, I have like a metal block or something with it. Okay. And is that because are you, are you taking winners off too quickly and you're letting losers get too big or what's, what do you think is the mental block there? I do like, I'll do a vertical spread. That's kind of what I got into mm -hmm. doing like verticals. And then it's like, I tell myself that I'm going to take them off at 50% loss and I'll just let it go all the way to zero. Yeah. And you said you like to take them off at 50% profit on the profit side. Some people I've heard are like, Oh, we'll just like let these expire and, and take the double if it's profitable. And so I just get kind of confused. It's like, well, what should I do? It's like, I try to make my rules, Yep. but then it's like, I hear these different traders doing different things and I'm trying to learn. And it's like, it's like, I can't stick to the rules or something. It's like, yep. I don't even know what my rules should be because I've heard like different things from different teachers to start with, you you have to, have to, have to, have to come up with your rules. Because here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm trading verticals as a strategy for the NTT program that we trade, I trade, I trade those differently than I do if I'm putting on a vertical as a, a downside hedge. It's not that any, anybody's wrong in the way that they manage their verticals. It's the way that they do it based on their overall bigger picture trading strategy. So what, what, you need to, what you need to decide is why, A, why are you putting on that trade? You know, is it part of a system like an NTT? And if it is, you know, there's a, there's a very clear 100% rules based reason for why you take it off. I don't know. It's like, I tried to do it a little, little bit and then I was like, oh, but like, there's a reversal on the candlesticks. And so, you know, I shouldn't put this on because yeah. like, you know, and I just got all messed up. I'm like, ah, I just like, you know, it's like, I want to do the NTT thing. I want to follow those rules, but I get these like conflicts. It's like, oh, but there's a, you know, there's a reversal. Like, and, and, and if it's contradictory, then I can't like do anything. I see this over and over. If you like that, that's why if you see my charts that I, when I'm doing videos and things like that, they're very clean, right? I mean, if I yeah. have NTT, if I'm trading NTT, I have my NTT charts and it only has that on it. It doesn't have any other indicators. It doesn't have any other components because that's exactly what happens. And I've, I've fallen victim to that in the past too, where all of a sudden, 
oh yeah, I'm, I'm in a downtrend, but I see this reversal candle or whatever thing that pops in my head that I've, you know, seen or learned or traded before. And I, and it creates that conflict. You, you've got to, you've got to get rid of that. You, you just have to. I think, I think I just need to be like, okay, I'm going to do NTT and like not even look at any other chart. I think that's what I have to do. And I have to just abandon, you know, candlesticks and all that other stuff. I just have to abandon it and to say, no, I'm only going to look at the end. For me, that that's what I've done from a, from a directional standpoint. The only thing that I use at all anymore is the, is the NTT stuff. And, and, and I don't know if you've seen my recent videos, but my, my statistics uh, over the last year, it, you know, in my, in my futures account, for example, is only at about 54% win rate. 54% winners. Only 54% winners. But guess what? I've tripled my account over the last 11 months. I know. I saw that. And it's like mind blowing. I just like, it's like, I've never done anything like that. And I'm like, man, I wish I could get that result. You know, that's awesome. I mean, it's amazing to me. But my, but my, my point is I'm wrong 45% of the time. Yeah, but I know cut. that if I just do it over and over and over and over again, because I know I have that edge with the, the size of my winners versus the size of my losers and the, and the win rate, I know that I know how consistent those profits will be over time. Yeah. And so it, it, part of it, part of it for you is going to be having that confidence and doing something over a, a large number of trade occurrences and, and tracking it to the point where you see the statistics and you see the outcome over time. And that's going to give you the confidence to whenever something else pops in your head to say, nope, I'm not going to do it. So, so part of that just comes from the confidence of having the actual data, having the actual outcome. And that, that unfortunately takes time. Um, you could do it paper trading, you know, if you don't want to risk real money at first, but, um, or you can, you know, trade very small and, and just see the probabilities play out. You know, the yeah. biggest, the biggest thing that I see traders do is they either they a trade too big or B they trade something for too short a period of time. And if they happen to hit it in a period of time that was a drawdown, well, then it's like, ah, oh, this, yeah, this doesn't really, I don't like this because I'm not making money quick enough or whatever it is, or they trade too big and they, you know, hit it on a losing on a little bit of a losing streak and, and it, you know, then that really hurts their account. And then they're kind of in the same mental mindset of, of losing confidence in that strategy. Yeah. So, so finding, and, and that's why I was, I was asking you about kind of your, where do you gravitate to your, you know, your favorite kind of strategies. And there's, I know, I know very, very successful traders who don't trade directionally. So you don't, you don't have to trade directionally. I mean, if, if, if trading neutral type, you know, calendarized, iron condor type, you know, iron duck, whatever strategy, you know, short strangle strategies. If that's a better fit for you, then only focus on that. You know, there's nothing that says that you have to trade all the, I mean, I trade a lot and, you know, sometimes I, I, I think about this a lot that, gosh, you know, if I just <clears throat> focused what I taught into one or two strategies, instead of all the strategies that I teach, would that help people more? Because I do, I do feel like sometimes people think, well, he's doing this and this and this and this. So I got to do this and this and this and this. And, and you really don't. I, I really, and I've been trying to, to talk about this more on my podcast and different things that you, you've really got to find what's the best fit for you and, and, and laser focus into that. Now, I personally don't think that focusing on just one strategy is the way to go either. I think that once somebody gets to the point, which it sounds like you are, where you, I mean, you, you have a, a good understanding just overall options and trading in general, but focus on two to three strategies. And, and what, I would, what I would recommend, what I would prefer to see you do or someone in your situation do is do something that benefits from implied volatility expansion like calendars double calendars, the TGIF, the, the dynamic double calendar strategies. Yeah. I really, I really that like the strategies because like they're, they're very clear cut in the rules mm -hmm. and I've been pretty comfortable doing those and those have worked for me. 
and they've been mostly profitable. And so in the iron duck one too, was like a pretty easy trade where I like, you know, I read the Mark Douglas book and he had the exercise at the end of the book. And that was kind of it. It was like, okay, I'm going to put on one of these iron ducks. I literally did like every expiration for like three, two or, I don't know. You can see it on there. It's like two or three months just putting it on, putting it on. And it was like very clear cut, you know, when to take, when to cut the loss. Right. So I, I liked that in the, in the double calendars. If you've been profitable with the calendar strategies and you have not been profitable directional trading, what if you had taken all your energy from looking at charts and trying to, trying to do directional trades and all that energy and capital and just focused it on the calendars? Think about yeah. how you would, you would probably have had a profitable year, right? Yeah. But what I, where I was going uh, right before that is, is I was saying, you know, what if, you know, what if you just focused on two or three strategies, like one that benefits from IV expansion, like calendars, double calendars, okay. and okay. one that benefits from IV contraction, like iron ducks or iron condors yeah. or short strangles, or it doesn't, whatever, you know, pick your, pick your poison. I think I would do condors. Like you, I don't think I have naked options on my account. Yeah. Okay. So iron condors. So, because what happens then is on days when implied volatility is contracting like it is today, that's when you can put on the calendar type trades. Yeah. Well, on days when implied volatility is spiking, that's when you would enter with iron condors. Okay. Yeah. And so you're, what you're doing then is you're layering in to these different strategies at the appropriate times at different price levels in different durations. And you're keeping your position size small and you're building up these positions over time. And then you're taking them off, following your rules, taking them off at a percentage of max profit or, you know, whatever the rules are, depending on the strategy. And you're just rinsing and repeating over and over. Yeah. Now the problem with that, if you're like me, is that you would get bored. Is that, <laughs> yeah. does, does that happen to you? I think it does happen to me and I don't really acknowledge it because I'm like, oh, it's like I've got these trades and I'm used to working hard, right? And so I'm like, I need to be working harder. I need to like, you know, it's like I need to like do something. And these trades are just sitting here and I, it's like, can I do a day trade? Or it's like, what can I do? Yep. And so I, yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe that is a thing, the boredom. That that's killer. And, and, you know, maybe you need to, maybe you, maybe you have to say, look, I'm only going to look at, I'm at a platform for two hours a day, once near the market open and once near the market closed. And I'm not allowed to get on it in between because I feel like I need to be doing something. Yeah. That's a real problem. I, Hey, I have that problem. Okay. I'm a, I'm a freaking trade junkie. That's why I do what I do, <laughs> but I've also, but I also know, but I also don't just trade just to trade to feel like I'm doing something anymore. Yeah. I, I used to do that. So I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But, but that is, that can be detrimental. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I was, I read, I read this book recently. Um, this guy by, uh, by the name of Craig Ballantyne. It, it, it's focused on, oh, here it is. Here it is right here, actually. The perfect day formula. Cool. Uh, is this fresh in my mind? I just happened to have it here because I was, I was going through one of his worksheets. But one of, the, one of the key things that I got out of that book is, you know, as, as a trader, one of the reasons that you probably gravitated towards trading is because of the, the financial and the time freedom that it can allow, right? Yeah. Is that true? Definitely. Yeah. So here's, here's the problem. When you're a trader, there are so many different ways to trade and there's so much freedom to do different things that it, it, it almost, it, it becomes a negative rather than a positive. And, and one of the things he talks about in this book, and this is not a trading book, but one of the things that he talks about is that true freedom is actually created by structure, process, and discipline. So in whatever it is that you're doing to create that real freedom that you want, that real freedom of time, that real freedom of finances, you have to be disciplined and process-driven and structured 
in, in whatever it is you're doing to a, to a crazy degree for that, for that actual freedom to come. And, and the problem with, with trading is we have so much freedom. We don't have anybody looking our, over our shoulder, you know, telling us, no, you can't do that. You have to do this. You have to follow this rule. You have to do that. And that's what, that's what brings us to trading because that's a, a good thing. You know, there's no boss. There's no nothing like that. There's no rules. We can, we can do what we want. We can create a lifestyle that we want. The problem is there's not the rules as well. And so it's left to us to set those rules and those processes and, and those disciplines. And if you don't do that, you, you're never going to be successful trading. You're never going to see the, the finances. You're never going to see the time freedom that, that it will produce unless you have that discipline in your trading. One, one of the things uh, you mentioned, Mark Douglas, one of the things that he talks about is you have to be rigid in your rules and flexible in your expectations. And I think a lot of us, especially when we're first starting trading, is we are flexible with our rules, but we have these expectations that are very rigid. We think we deserve this. We think we should have this type of return. We, should, we think we should make this kind of money, but we're flexible in our rules. We'll bend those and break those all the time. And it's got to be the opposite. You've got to be rigid in your rules and flexible with your expectations. You, only, you can only get what the market gives you at the time that you're trading. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you can't, you can't force what you want out of the market. It just doesn't work that way. Number one, you need to come up with, I would, I would say no more than three strategies. Okay. And if it was me, I would look at like the double calendar strategy. I would look at some type of trade that uh, benefits from implied volatility contraction, whether that's iron ducts, iron condors, whatever it is. And then if you want to be directional, you have to choose a very specific way to trade directionally. You know, maybe that's NTT, maybe it's something else, but whatever it is, that's the only thing that you can use to make directional trades. And then the, and then the next thing is, and I, I don't, you know, from your log, I, I don't know this, but did you, do you have a, a very hard requirement that you're of trade size? In other words, is it a percentage of your account value? Is it a certain just flat dollar amount that you're that you let yourself risk per position, or how do you determine that? Um, I go with your rule of like up to five percent. Okay. And I for a while there, I was doing like probably two to three percent, and um, that that's kind of the the rule that I've been following, trying to keep it under five percent. Good. Um, I, would, I would say this. Yeah. I would focus on two to three, I, you know, and I, I, I've been emphasizing this a lot in those position sizing videos where 5% is the absolute max. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's kind of one of those things. If, if you, you know, if for whatever reason you, you want to get in a certain symbol and it just works out, you, you know, if you do three contracts, it goes a little above that, but if you do two, it's way under, you know, that kind of thing, like an NDX or something like that. But otherwise I would really, really, really try to focus on around that 2%. Okay. I've just over and over, I've, I've found that the smaller I trade, the more money I make because a couple of things, yeah. one, it's going to let you put on more positions. You know, I would, I would much rather you put on two different positions with 2% than one with five and, and not at the same time either. I'm talking about put on one today, put on another one tomorrow, you know, let price move around, use different durations, different expirations. Um, I'd much rather you do that and put on more positions than put on larger positions. Yeah. One of the ways that I got messed up this year was. I ended up putting on like different expiration cycles. So let's say I have like, like an iron condor, like two weeks out an iron condor, three weeks out an iron condor, four weeks out all at the same time on one symbol. And I was telling myself, I'm like, well, each one of these expirations are a different trade and they're all under 5%. But then when it, what ended up happening is I had like, a bunch of positions on SPX and the whole thing just tanked and all of those trades got hit super hard. And I was like that, I don't think that counts as under 5%. It was like, 
it was like four, like three or four percent positions, but they were different expirations. And so I convinced myself that they were all separate trades. And even you even got, you even have to be careful about, about, you know, different indices, right? I mean, if you have trades on the S and P and you have trades on the Russell, you have trades on the NASDAQ, those are all 80% correlated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah, and I use the beta weighting thing. I look at the beta weighting. That's how I like determine my like directional slant of my entire account. Right. And, and yeah, I toss. try not to, you know, I think that was a problem of mine before I met you where it's like, I would just kind of load the boat of my account and I would dude last like over a year ago before I found you, I was like, and no one told me this, but I was like, I probably had like, two or 300, you know, positive Delta and like a down day would come and I'd get all hit hard. And I just, the whole beta waiting thing kind of really transformed my trading because it made me understand it's like wanting to be more neutral in my account. That's awesome. And that's been huge. That's helped a lot. Cause like, it like drawdowns are tough for me. Like when I look, when my account value goes down, it's like, if it's too big, I just get so emotional. Like I just, it's just like, it, it's like messes me up so bad mentally. Let me, uh, let me ask you this outside of trading, how disciplined do you feel like you are in other aspects of your life? And, and let me, let me add on to that. Do you have a lot of things that you do extremely consistently outside of trading where you, where you would say you're very consistent at working out or very consistent at how you eat or very consistent at whatever it is? I don't know. Um, golf, golf for me, I'm a golfer and I work really hard at my game and I practice a lot and I'm pretty disciplined at that. Okay. And so have you, have you thought about the correlation between how you, how you prepare and focus on golf with the similar way of your trading? Yeah, I find a lot of, I find a lot of crossover there. Um, yes, I guess is the short answer. Um, I try to prepare myself like mentally and stuff like that. And I, I like trading. It's just that it's like, it, it, it's like when there's a drawdown or I don't make money or something like just it like really like messes with me mentally. And I get like almost like depressed for like a short period of time. One, one um, thing that and, I, and I don't was... experience that with golf. It's like, Oh, like I have a bad round it's yeah. like, or whatever, you know, it's like, Right. <laughs> so, so, so one thing I was, first of all, the fact that you do keep a trade log at all is awesome because 90% of traders don't even do that. The one thing that I would highly, highly suggest is in addition to what you're keeping here on your trade log, if you could add, add a column at the end where you actually take notes about whether you broke the rules and, and exactly, you know, if I, if you follow the rules exactly, you know, write that. Uh, if you broke the rules, write down how you broke the rules. You know, in other words, were you trying to take, were you supposed to take it off at 40% of max profit, but you waited till 50 or took it off at 30 or, or whatever it is, whatever you did to break your rules. And I'm talking about any little tiny thing, write that down. Okay. Or type that into your sheet. All right. And because I would guarantee with 100% certainty that if you had that documentation with every one of these trades, you would find that the majority of your losses have come when you, when you broke the rules, whether it was you got too big, you didn't manage it the way you were supposed to, or something and you would find that if you, if you remove those trades, you'd be profitable. I almost guarantee it. Do you, do you think that's true? Um, yeah, I definitely think that. Cause I know of some trades in here like TLT. I, <laughs> I almost figured it's like, well, I, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't really get a lot of losses on this trade. And then all of a sudden like a doozy hit and I did, I could have taken it off earlier. I could have taken it off like a 25% loss or a 50% loss. And I actually didn't have like super set rules on that because that trade was, 
a trade that I back tested. And it, what's funny about it is it's actually exactly the dynamic double calendar that you have. It's a 30 delta, like seven front week, 21 day back week, yep. double calendar that I found, you know, just kind of messing with the Delta pro. Um, but I didn't really have like a stop loss, like 25 or 50%. It, it just back tested well. And I know, you know, there's errors in back testing, but it's like, it back tested well with no stop loss. Right. <laughs> right. And so I just like, didn't have like a hard rule, like take it off at 25%. I just, and so yeah, I agree. And then another one, the next, the next one that, Another April 8th, I guess I did a couple of those that week. That was another 71% loss. Yep. And then there's like a 50% loss up there. And then, so yes, I, I totally agree. Like if I stuck to to the some better stop loss rules there on those, I would have done a lot better. Yep. Uh, and I'll and, tell you this, Andrew, at the end of the year, when I'm looking, to, or even on a monthly basis, when I'm looking through my trade journal my statistics every single time i'm like gosh why did i let that one go so big why did i let that loss get so big yeah that that's i know i'm i've become self-aware over the years of myself too and i know that one of my achilles heels in trading is that i hold on to trades too long i i'll hold on to winners too long i'll i'll get greedy and i'll want i'll be like yeah i've hit my profit target but i'm gonna wait and try to get some more yeah. I've also, I also hold on to losers too long thinking it's going to come back. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. that, it's that whole emotional thing that we're talking about. So I do that too. But what is, what's really helped me over the years is a keeping the journal like you have here with the numbers, but B the game changer was also adding that, that next piece of it, which I call a mindset journal where you're, yeah. you're actually documenting your, what you did with your rules and you're documenting how you felt when either you entered or closed out the trade. Usually I put when I close out the trade. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I'm kind of remembering how I did feel on some of those. And I just, it's like when I, when it's time to take a loss, I'm just like, no, it's going to come back. I don't want to take a loss. Oh, you know, and it's just, it's just, ah, yeah, it's like tough taking losses. When I first started trading, I was trading breakouts and I took like 15 losses in a row. and just became disgusted with this strategy I learned. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know, it's almost like I'm traumatized from it, where it's like, no, not another loss. Like, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, and, and then you're and then you're trading out of fear instead of yeah, focusing on the actual strategy a lot of times. I feel. Yeah, it's like the fear comes in. I think I, I struggle with fear more than greed. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm gonna I'll start adding like my kind of my my thoughts and feelings about the trade. Um What's your, what's your environment like while you're actually trading? Is it, is there like, do you have a specific room that you're by yourself? Are, are you kind of on a laptop in your kitchen? You got kids and stuff running around. What's, what's the environment? <laughs> Sometimes my kids are running around. Um, and so I try to get out of the house and I take my laptop down to like a coffee shop or something and put on some headphones. Okay, good. So I, I, I usually like when I'm serious and I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down and do this. I'm usually at like a coffee shop with my headphones in. Do you meditate? Yes. Cool. And, and how, how often, or how um, do you, much how do you do day. it? And what's your, how does that work? So my, one of my main meditations is called the uh, heart coherence meditation. Okay. Where you focus your attention on your like heart chakra area. And, and then I'll like do that. And then um, I'll do like a, gratitude list like everything i'm grateful for and it's it's supposed to um is that that's considered transcendental me uh meditation is that correct or is that no it's it's i from the person that taught me it it's called heart coherence okay and it's supposed to like connect your heart and your mind i know it's kind of woo woo but it's like i believe in that kind of stuff and so i do that it's like it's like meditation combined with a gratitude list essentially of everything I'm grateful for to kind of get me in that gratitude mindset. And do you do that every single day? Um, or do you just do it every once in a while or how often? I do it pretty much every day. Yes. Okay. And do you do it? Where, 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 when does that come in, in relationship to your trading? Do you do it in the morning? Do you do it in the evening? I do it. I do it morning and night. I do it morning. 
um, like kind of one of the first things that when I wake up in the morning, I do that. And then I, I'll go into my trading after I kind of wake up, and, you know, do my thing after I meditate, basically. It's interesting you ask that, but yes, I do do that. Uh, and I make sure to do it before my trading because I find that it puts me in a better mindset. That's awesome. You know, kind of a more like peaceful, calmer mindset. That's awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad you do that because that that was a big that was a big deal for me. I've only been doing that for less than a year, um, probably nine nine months or so, and it's it's been, it's been yeah, it's pretty powerful, me. you know. And um, that's cool. Yeah, it's 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 something I've done for a long time. I kind of grew up in a religious you know setting, and so that kind of stuff was kind of became normalized for me, meditating and praying and stuff. Cool. Awesome. Will you do me a favor? Yeah. Will you, will you write out in as much detail as possible, what strategies you're going to focus on? And okay. like I said, I would highly recommend limiting that to three or less, two or okay. three. Will you, will you detail that? And, and I want, I want rules. I want 100% rules that you are going to follow for each of those strategies. I want okay. when you're going to take off a losing trade. I want when you're going to take off a winning trade. Um, and maybe it's not a percent, you know, if you're directional, maybe it's based on something specific on the chart or whatever it is. I don't care, but I want to, I want to see very specific rules that, that I could look at and say, okay, I, I get this and, and, and rules that aren't, are not going to be bent or broken or twisted or done or anything in any way. Um, so that, and then, um, and then, like I said, foc you know, focus on adding a, a mental and a rules based documentation to your journal. Um, and I think, I think that's it, man. If, if and I, I would love, I, lo I would love for you to send that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um, send it to you. It's kind of like a trading plan with my rules, right? So three trading, I mean, looking at my um, log, do you have like recommendation? Like, what do you think has been working the best? Like, I know the iron duck worked really well. You know, it's like maybe that one and the double calendars and condors. I would, I would say, yeah, if you were going to pick two, I would say double calendars and iron ducks. Okay. And then maybe, uh, and, and I, you can, and you can, I mean, iron ducks and iron condors, you can, you can say that's one. Okay. That's, that's one, one then strategy. Okay. Cause it, you know, the ducks just kind of a variation of the condor. And it's like, I want to do the NDT thing as well. I don't know. I just like, I just want to do that. I, I want to, you know, I, I don't know. I just want to, so maybe I do that even though I don't have a lot of experience with it. Well, that's up to you. I'll, I'll let you decide that. I mean, um, you know, I do, I do think, having a, a very, you know, 100% rules based way to trade directionally is, 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 pro is very profitable. But I also heard you say you kind of gravitate more to the, to the neutral stuff too. And so there's, yeah, you know, just focusing on those two, at least for a while, isn't a bad idea either, but I'll, that's up to you. I don't have any issue with you doing it either way. I just want to see you. I want to see your journal in, two or three months from now. And I want to see, you know, how well you followed your rules and how that profitability has changed. Cause I think it's, it's going to make a world of difference, man, a world of difference. Just picking three strategies, writing about the rules and writing notes about the rules as I trade. And you, and, and the rules and, and, you know, the, the rules that you write out that I want to see, you know, as soon as you can get it done tomorrow, Monday, next week, whatever, um, you know, position size is part of that too. Okay. I want to know exactly what it is from a dollar amount or a percentage of account or whatever it is. Um, and, and I think that's gonna, I think that, that along with the updating your journal is going to make a huge difference for you. It's not going to take away some mistakes. You're still going to make some mistakes. You're still going to break the rules. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. but you're going to do it less. And then when you see, when you, when you go over that journal and you see, Oh my God, I did this again. And if I didn't do this, my profits would be this instead of this. And you're going to do it less. And then you're going to do it less. 
And then you're going to get to the point where you're like, I don't like, there's nothing beneficial about this. And because, because I also want you to document when you broke the rules and it, it went your way. In other words, you were, you should have taken it off, but you held on and it came back in your favor and you took it off for a profit. I want to, I want especially document that as well on your trades because, um, because what you'll see is that over time, yeah, that happens sometimes, but it happens a lot, lot less than the fact of it. You should have taken it off and it got worse. Yeah. So and, document when I take a, a trade off and then it goes my way afterwards. Yeah. Like, well, like if you, so let's say, let's say, you know, on a vertical spread, you, you should have taken it off at a 50% of max profit and it goes against, and, and you didn't, you held on for more profit and then it went against you. You end up taking a loss on the trade. So I want to see that, but I oh, also yeah. want to see like, let's say a double calendar where you should have taken it off. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a losing trade. You should have taken it off, but you didn't. And it came back in your favor and you booked a profit. Oh, <laughs> I, I want to see that too. Okay. Because what you'll find is that you will have that happen. And the problem is when that happens, now you've been rewarded for breaking your rules. Yeah, I see that. And so now you're thinking, now the next time it happens, you're thinking, well, it worked out last time. And now you're back in the cycle of breaking your rules. And what happens invariably is, boom, you get hit with a, with a big loss. Okay, so, so I, it, that, that's part of the process of that documentation is make sure that you're, you know, don't say I followed the rules, it was good, I booked a profit. If you didn't follow the rules, just because it came back and booked a profit doesn't mean it was a good trade. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Sound like a plan? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Okay, I'm going to write out the trades I'm going to do and start journaling on my logs. And this documentation of your rules it's something that i'd I'd like to have you send to me and it's something that you should keep in front of you while you're trading okay if you can't see behind my you can't see my desk but i have i have a whiteboard on my wall over here it says compete on process yeah so i usually i used to compete with other traders my other buddies who trade and stuff on performance on PL. Yeah. And, and that would cause me to break my rules and do things that I shouldn't do. And so now one of my biggest things is, is I'm, I'm competing not only with myself, but I'm competing with other traders on process. You know, how good can I be at following my rules? Yeah. I don't care about the P and L. Okay. You did better on that trade. Who cares? I, I followed the rules better. <laughs> That's a win for me. You know, yeah, that kind of I mean, thing. So, so like really comes down to following the rules, like really strictly. hundred percent. And like really believing in the trade, like believing in the, the setup and everything. Not, not necessarily believing in that one setup, but understanding that if you do that over hundreds of occurrences, you will come out on top. You will come out ahead. You will come out yeah. profitable. That one, that one trade means nothing. It's just one of hundreds of trades that you're going to take over the year. But like, yeah, believing in the overall strategy over time. Believe, exactly. Yep. Not believing in that one setup, not believing in that one trade, believing in that, in that strategy. Exactly. Yeah. The whole strategy, like over time. Yep. I mean, in the double calendars, they work. I mean, it, it even shows on my logs that I've been profitable with those. So, all right, man, I've got some work to do. Um, I'm not going to give up. I mean... <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like kind of in a tough financial spot with this because I was intending, I lost quite a bit of money in my account. So well, I'm going to be looking here, for a job. <laughs> here's the, well, that's that's a big deal. And one thing that I, I, I made a note of and I, I, I just see it now and I forgot to say is you're putting, you're putting more stress on yourself in your trading because you don't have another source of income coming in right now. Yeah. It's almost, it's, I mean, especially just after you've been trading for, what'd you say, two years? Yeah, a little over two years. Somebody who's only been trading for two years, trying to generate a full-time income from trading, it's going to mess with your emotions, man. It, it will mess with your emotions. I've been there. I know. 
Okay. I'm speaking from past, from, from personal yeah. experience. That's um, why I wanted to talk to you. I know you've got the experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, your situation you're, you're, I got myself in, man. I just. <laughs> you're making, you're going to make trades. And even if you're not consciously thinking about it, subconsciously, your mind is thinking that you've got to generate income because you don't have income coming here. Yeah. It's not a good, it's not a good place to be in mentally for trading. It's really not. I mean, unless you have like a huge account and you can like afford it. Right. Yeah. But half, half the battle is being aware of that. Yeah. You know, keeping that in a conscious level that am I, am I doing this trade because I'm forcing it because I think I need to, to make this a profitable trade or am I following my process? Yeah. Following my rules. Am yeah. I, it's a lot of extra pressure. It's a ton of pressure. I mean, I always like, I like, you know, I have, I have interest in other business. I have real estate rental income. I have other sources of income because I know that if I am only focused on trading as my only source of income, it messes with me still. Even still today. Still. So I've, I've, I've structured, I've structured my, my life over time because I realized that um, I've been trading for over 20 years, but I mean, even, you know, five, uh, even up to probably seven or eight years into trading, I, I, I realized that I had to have, I had to take other income source. So I had to take money out of my trading account. I had to buy rental properties. I had to do different things to create this other, these other sources of income that were, 100% uncorrelated to trading and it it's a big deal man it's a really big deal yeah i need i need to get there i need to get there with that all right brother i really appreciate it man yeah absolutely uh keep in keep in touch um i want to i want to see your progress with this because i know it's going to i know if if you follow through on it it's going to be a huge difference for you i'm going to do it um, I'm going to, I'm going to stay in the community. I'll probably ask, it's keeping, keeping on asking questions and stuff. And I just think it's so cool that you answer so fast and everything. Yeah. So really I, appreciate you, man. I love it, dude. I mean, I, I, one of the, one of the main reasons I built navigation trading is because it trading's lonely. I needed, I needed my people. So yeah. <laughs> I, I got to have my people around me. So, um, I'm, I'm happy to help, man. I really appreciate it a lot. You know, I'll, I'll send you over my, my trading plans and. All right, Andrew. Sounds good, man. Okay. Have a great rest of your day. All right, buddy. You too. Have a good Thanks weekend. Again. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So that concludes our episode. I hope you liked it. I hope you found some value and this is a little bit different episode format than we've done in the past. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Go to community.navigationtrading.com. You can post and let us know exactly what you thought about the episode and if there's any other topics or subjects that you'd like us to cover. Community.navigationtrading.com. We'll see you on the inside or we'll see you at the next episode.